league. And while he seems to be in the best shape physically, he also has an edge mentally. As he tells our Dave McMiniman, it's a daily practice to control his thoughts. For years, you've worked on your body. But were there any times in your life or in your career where you started to put more emphasis on the mental fitness side of things? Yeah, I would think I would say like probably like the last eight years. Um, and, and the one instance that I could think about right off top was after the loss to Dallas in the, in the 2011 finals. Um, I knew that the physical side wasn't gonna just be enough. And also the, the level of scrutiny that I was dealing with and how I got out of my comfort zone um, I lost the love of fun for the game, and I knew that was the mental side. To be able to be in a packed arena on the road with 20,000, 22,000 people screaming fans, going crazy, um, to be able to find a moment, two minutes or one minute or whatever, 30 seconds to be able to just to close my eyes and, and just kind of relax myself and calm myself, it's kind of, it's like it's meditation, basically. Um, has worked, uh, you know, tremendously for me in my career. Is there like some sort of washed king list that you keep <laughs> at home in the summertime, all the people that were casting aspersions? <laughs> What's fueling this run for you? I think myself. I mean, I'm fueling myself. My teammates is fueling me. Uh, my kids is fueling me. And the list is, is, is fueling me as well. But, you know, for me, to be able to be in a position where my teammates trust me to handle the ball and be the point guard. I have not done it um, since probably like two weeks into my rookie year, but for me to do it in my 17th year with the amount of uh, minutes that I've played, with the amount of games that I've played, and my teammates to trust me, um, it means a lot. I mean, we, we, we love our team. You know, it starts with me and AD both on and off the floor, how our approach is both on and off the floor, and it trickles down to everybody else, but um, everyone is an MVP. Everyone has a role, MVP in their role, and you can't ask for more than that. All right, so for more, we welcome in NBA champion Matt Barnes, also a Laker great. Can I say that? Not great. Just Laker. Is this a Laker? Laker. Yeah, this not, Laker. I'll put the great on Formal it anyway. Right. Um, LeBron will turn 35 on December 30th. He's in his 17th season. We just talked about it. So mentally, he talks about him being in the best mental condition. But what about physically? You've seen the way he's been playing, and other teams are load managing, i.e. Right. E. the Clippers and right. Kawhi. Do you think that LeBron can, can keep this up throughout the course of a year? I think what LeBron understood early on was if we got AD, we we're going to be all right. Mm -hmm. And I think they're showing that AD is kind of coming into his own. It took him a little bit to get going. But I, I said early on, and I even said last year, if they got him, if they are able to ride AD throughout the season so LeBron can kind of pick and choose his spots, that you're going to get the best LeBron in the playoffs and possibly the finals. So you're <clears> watching <throat> LeBron now, and you think he's picking and choosing his spots. He's getting up like he just started hooping. Uh, he, he looks fun. It looks like they're back out there having fun, like he said in the clip. He, he lost fun for a little while, and I think that happened last year. You know, last year was a lot for him. And, yeah. and, and you know. So I think he took that on the chin and, and came out with the hunger this year that we haven't seen in a long time. And like I said, but I still think he's able to pick and choose because they can ride AD now. It's interesting that you say, uh, you mentioned him saying he lost a lot of the fun. Last year probably was tough, which is why he's always hashtagging everything revenge season right. and right. washed king. Right. But his two teams that he played with that were all-stars, I'm referring to D-Wade and Chris Bosh when he was in Miami, and then he had Kyrie and Kevin Love with the Cavs. It took some time for those teams to kind of gel and come together. The chemistry between him and AD is instantaneous and they've been playing fantastic. Why is that? I think that's just, it, it adds to LeBron's experience and like I said, his mental approach. I, I think his job is, it starts with him, but to just empower everybody else. You know, he's getting everyone involved, especially AD. Everyone's out there having fun. The guy, everyone knows their role. Doc Rivers used to say, be a star in your role. So I think everyone's role is established out there and they're playing they're, they're playing free, fun, and, and, and uh, everyone's loving it. So they haven't hit any adversity yet. I'm interested to see what happens if they hit a two or three game losing streak at any point in this season. But uh, you know, right now, they look like one of the best teams. Yeah, and they're having fun. You're right. You see the pictures of them on the plane together, Lake right. Show coming near you. Um, as a fan, I wanted them to delete that, but that has nothing to do with that. Uh, let's talk about <laughs> this 15-game win streak that they and the Bucks are on at the moment. If you had to go pound for pound, team for team, the better team between the Lakers, two. Lakers, no question. Why? 
Just because I think uh, LeBron and AD are the best duo in the game. And then they filled in that roster with great role players. Danny Green has been there. JaVel McGee has been there. Dwight Howard, to me, is possibly their X factor. I think he knew this is his last chance. And his second time in L.A., he's making it count. Uh, we can't forget about Avery Bradley and what he brings once he's healthy. Uh, Rajon Rondo, you know, uh, Caruso. And, uh, you know, I've been talking to Kyle Kuzma a lot lately about him kind of finding his niche and his role in that system. So from top to bottom, they're a very solid team. Uh, Frank Vogel's done a great job and really hats off to uh, uh, Rob Palenka because I was very critical of them in the offseason. Okay, so <laughs> any other teams that we should be looking out for that you think are pretty interesting? I think the team right down the hall. Um, I think last year, the what Clippers. The oh. Clippers. Oh, okay. uh, you know, the Clippers, that they had a core that bought in. You add two selfless superstars that still really haven't gelled together. Um, I think we're going to see the best Clippers after the All-Star break. Uh, you know, once Kawhi and PG get in sync with playing with each other, uh, we know load management is a big thing. And, you know, Lou Williams, when I had him on the podcast, he said it's not so much load management with Kawhi. It's like he's really hurt. Yeah. So I think, you know, once these guys hit their stride post-All-Star break, uh, the Western Conference is going to come down to those two teams. Oh, boy. I'm, I mean, this is a really good, exciting NBA I love season. It. And most importantly, thank you for being here. You're going to be on the Jump 3 Eastern yeah. right here. Make sure you tune in for more of Matt Barnes on ESPN. Thank you, my friend. Thanks for having me. Maybe they'll be talking about this guy, Ja Morant. Missed some time with back spasms. He returned to the floor last night and immediately jumped into top plays. We'll show you the other nine coming up. Uh, Football is Joe Burrow. No excuses. I Joe Burrow into the end zone. Comes down LSU. Yeah. Joe Burrow has just set an LSU school record. Just amazing to see Joe Burrow. Yeah. I got no. He's waving goodbye. Yeah. Uh, the Heisman finalists announced yesterday. Joe Burrow, of course, is one of them. Three quarterbacks are invited. Ohio State's Justin Fields and Oklahoma's Jalen Hurts are the other two. Ohio State defensive end Chase Young also got the invite. Burrow, the overwhelming favorite. Also noteworthy that all three quarterbacks transferred to their current school. Let's welcome in the human opinion, Paul Feinbaum. So, Paul, uh, let's, like not, let's not kid ourselves or gin up fake tension for Saturday night. Chase and Justin and Jalen probably don't need to work on acceptance speeches. So what drama is there, if any, for Joe Burrow's coronation? Well, we want the largest possible audience, uh, David, so I'm going to just <laughs> bloviate here for about 10 minutes. Uh, truthfully, uh, the only thing in question is whether this is the biggest uh, landslide in, in Heisman history. Uh, Troy Smith, uh, I think, had 92 or 91 or 2 percent of the vote. 6 yes. Yeah, okay. I think Joe Burrow will, will obliterate that. When I voted uh, on, on Sunday afternoon, I really didn't think about it uh, for two seconds. And sometimes you, you do vacillate. The real question was who would be number two. And, and, and I think Justin Fields will likely come in there. And Jalen Hurts, uh, remarkably, is going to New York, the former backup uh, starter turned backup quarterback at Alabama. Burrow, of course, would be the first LSU Tiger to win it since Billy Cannon 60 years ago. All right, time, uh, your old friend Lane Kiffin officially announced as the head coach <laughs> of Ole Miss yesterday. Of course, he was in the SEC at Tennessee, your alma mater, for one short, stormy year. Yeah. That was a decade ago. Here's what he had to say about why he is returning to the conference. Let's go back to the highest level. Now that we're really prepared for this better and haven't been the places that we've been going through those obstacles, and that's so, you know, we're in a much better position to win and to do, every, to do everything right from top to bottom and not make some of those mistakes that we made 10 years ago at Tennessee. All right, Lane certainly is battle-tested. Uh, the Rebels, though, won just four games last season, so there's work to do. What level of success can you see him having in Oxford? I think he has a really good chance, primarily for this reason. He has a great quarterback in John Rice Plumley. Uh, he's been outstanding, and, and you know, I, I just couldn't get over the fact, David, that this is Lane Kiffin's fifth head coaching job. Remember, he coached at the Raiders, and he's had four college uh, coaching, coaching positions. He's only 44 years old, so like his first job must have been at 16 or something. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, he keeps getting these jobs. Uh, and one thing that he does, he creates buzz. The people in the media love him. Uh, he, he talks to media members. He texts them. He tweets. He is a dream for people like me. And he's a pretty good coach. Won two Conference USA yeah, championships at Florida Atlantic. So we'll see. It's just going to be interesting there at Ole Miss, the combination of he and Lane Kiffin and that crew there. Uh, Paul giving us his thoughts on the college football scene. Sports Center, 6 Eastern with Sage and Kevin on the desk. The latest on Lamar Jackson's quad injury. Got, remember, we got a Thursday game against the Jets. Plus, breaking down Eli's Monday night performance. Good first half, not so much in the second half. 
and evaluating the escalating cost of one Garrett Cole. You can see it all after PTI on ESPN and the app. All right, so revenge season, washed king. These are the words of LeBron James, words he's using that critics